2022, scientists took some human neurons and they put them into a Petri dish, not attached to a human, all right? And they had a special chip that had little ports where they could put the, the dendrites from the neurons into the chip. So now, now you've got a, a neuron interface and they put it into a computer loaded with Pong. All right, here's <laughs> here's what happened. They, they fired up Pong, those neurons began playing Pong and the longer they played, the better they got. They learned from their mistakes. Here's the scientists. They're up against a little bit of a quandary here. Where do the instructions for Pong live? And so now they're looking, are they in the neurons? Remember when I was a kid, Einstein had died just before I was born. Mm. And I got to see part of his brain, the thin section that mm -hmm. in the University of Kansas to see what made his brain differ from everybody else. And the answer is it looked pretty much like everybody else's, except he had a lot more folds yeah. for more surface area. So scientists are they're looking in his brain, where's E equals MC square, you know? All the chicken soup his mother was making him. <laughs> and the same thing with these neurons. How the neurons know how to play Pong, mm -hmm. what this experiment showed was that those neurons are literally biological antenna. They're tuned to a place in the field, and we now know July. 4th, 2012, the superconducting super collider in CERN announced that there is a field underlying all existence called the Higgs field. Peter Higgs predicted, he got to see his prediction come true. And it's no longer a question. The question is, what is our relationship to that field? What does it mean? That field has many names. We know energy is information. So that neuron literally is a biological antenna tuned to the place in the field where Pong is pervasive from all of the years, <laughs> all the years that it was there, there's a- Pong has a, always existed. Here, well, here- <laughs> Needed to draw so, it well, from here, the universe. Here, here's the shift. The Russians were way ahead of us on this. And I remember we were reading Russian research papers during the Cold War. They began to look at the human body less from a sticky, gooey, mushy, wet cellular perspective and more from an IT perspective, information technology. That's a way different way of thinking about the human body. They're looking at the components of the human body as transistors and resistors and pastors and batteries and circuits. One of the things they found is that human DNA, proceedings from the journal uh, Soft Computing actually published this, and this is a quote from them, that human DNA functions as a fractal biological antenna, a 3D antenna. Fractal antenna is picking up a lot of signals across a, a broad bandwidth of information. And it suggests that we are in communication with something. And I think this is how science is going to find the common ground with spirituality. Science is a contemporary language of a lot of the mystical traditions.